Hello everyone, I'm in the city of Armagh today and I'm doing a little bit of astronomical history research. Uh, for those of you who know me well or follow me for years on my website and social media, you know I'm big into NLCs or Noctilus and Clouds. We're now uh, well into Noctilus and Clouds season and I'm looking for the grave of a famous Irish astronomer who was once the third director of Armagh Planetarium. Sorry, Armagh Observatory. Um, if you do a bit of history in the NLCs, uh, most websites will credit Thomas W. Backhouse as the first person to uh, catalogue Noctilus and Cloud displays around about 1885, I believe. Uh, that's the one you're most likely to see in any uh, textbooks and websites when you do research on the subject. However, it's not as straightforward as that. There's a lot of information in recent years that has come to light from research from Armagh Observatory by uh, Dr. Chris Christopher Butler, I believe, about the work of the Land Third Director, Thomas Romney Robinson. By the way, it's my dog in the background, Rhea. Well, Rhea, have you found it yet? Found the grave yet? I'm looking for it. Well, anyway, Thomas Romney Robinson made observations on the 1st of May, uh, 30 years prior to the Thomas Backhouse observation. And his observations seemed to indicate that he did indeed see noctilus and clouds. The entry was made, on the, there were actually several entries, but the most interesting one was the 1st of May, when he reported strange luminous clouds in the northwest, not auroral. So he was sure it wasn't aurora, these were clouds, they were luminous and it was in a clear sky. And Robinson was a very keen uh, observer, not just astronomical, but a meteorol meteorological observer. He was really into his weather phenomena. So he wouldn't he wouldn't have mistake, mistook them for cirrus clouds or anything like that. And it wasn't the right time of year for other phenomena, such as nacreous clouds. So it had probably had to be noctilus and clouds. So in all likelihood, Thomas Romney Robinson from County Armagh, Northern Ireland, was the first person to uh, observe and record noctilus and clouds. So not a lot of people actually know that. But for years I've always said I'd love to come and find Thomas Robin, Romney Robinson's grave just to see it um, and be a part of that history. So today I finally decided to do something about that. So I'm walking along here in a church just inside Armagh City itself and I've been given directions last night by astronomer and historian John C. McConnell from McGabry. A good friend of mine, an astronomer of many years experience, and he's actually an authority on Irish astronomical history. So he sent me over a couple of photographs of the grave and told me it was in this specific church, so I'm going to go now and find it. And uh, hopefully get to see Mr. Robinson in person. And maybe it'll hear tonight and I'll get to see NLCs as well. Let's see. Right. Let's go. Right, Rhea, let's find this grave. And the picture John showed me, it looked to be like a, a crypt, a metal crypt of a green colour. Didn't say whereabouts it was in the churchyard, it is a very big churchyard, just said it was at the back somewhere, so. I'm gonna head that direction now. I'm coming here. Rio loves exploring. Good gear. Right, well, I'll, I'll start a new video once I get there. Okay, I think I found it. I say think because it's so overgrown and, and the writing is so worn down I'm not entirely sure this looks not dissimilar to the picture John sent me this is the, the grave here obviously there's more than one person buried in here more than one Robinson but as you can see the writing is uh, around this way the writing is hard to make out. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure, but I can see Robinson. I'm going to stand on a ledge here. I'm going to flick this screen around. There. I can see Robinson mentioned. Several Robinsons, 
but I can't make out any more information from my angle here. I really need to be above it. But it definitely says Robinson. But I can't make out anything to do with uh, the observatory on it. But I'm assuming that has to be it. So I'm going to take a few pictures here and I'll do an R scan of the graveyard just to be sure there isn't anything else. Yeah, so just confirming it, Rhea and I have found the right grave. Alright Rhea, good girl, success. So yes, it said St Mark's Church. On the way in, on the road, in the pathway up the church on the left hand side, you'll see it's only one sort of the, of the size in the middle of this graveyard. But yes, T Thomas, Dr. Thomas Romney Robinson, a very famous man, made a lot of contributions to astronomy in many areas and meteorology. And of course, he's also famous for inventing the one cup anemometer for measuring wind speed. So that was Thomas's design as well. A uh, lot of contributions to history, a lot of, lot of do with Irish astronomy. So re Google his name, Thomas Romney Robinson. And read all about his history. A very uh, a fascinating guy, hard worker, dedicated, passionate, made a lot of changes to astronomy in this area and a great job as director of Armagh Observatory and of course and a special interest to me possibly the first observations of noctilus and clouds uh, ever from Northern Ireland County Armagh 30 years before Thomas Backhouse the man himself Thomas Romney Robinson so with luck we'll maybe get to see some noctilus and clouds tonight if the sky clears and in uh, memory of Robinson here fascinating guy I feel really privileged to have found his grave and to show my respects to him and to be part of uh, this NLC and uh, astronomical history beautiful gra graveyard actually a beautiful church it's actually massive all the way around it way beyond there downhill and then back up hill again and around the other side of the church whole way around just grave grey grave very old as well a lot of history here Lovely feeling in the grounds, actually a beautiful place. So if you ever want to show your respects to Thomas Romney Robinson and you have an interest in Oculus and Clouds and their history in Ireland, check this out. Yeah, so just having a relaxing moment before I head on. Definitely worth checking this place out. Very, very nice. I'm glad I brought Rio along, my dog, to meet the famous Mr. Robinson. Beautiful city, Armagh, especially when they get a good weather. Nice mild day today, quite overcast, but nice all the same. I actually might just go for a walk around Armagh Observatory on the way back. In fact, this church, St. Mark's, is only a couple hundred metres away, a few hundred metres away from the Planetarium Observatory anyway. So it's not far at all, it's easy to find. But I might check a look around there and check out the, the domes and the grounds. It's quite a nice area. Let me get uh, some footage for you. Rhea's enjoying the day out anyway. That's the main thing, aren't you, Rhea? Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. Funny, this is the strangest noctilus and cloud season I've ever seen. Normally, um, I'm catching NLCs at the end of May, late May, which is very early in the season. Worst case scenario, start of June, but it's now mid June, actually after it, and I haven't seen a single NLC display yet. Not to say there haven't been. There's a couple of Oculus and Cloud displays earlier in the month, uh, which were well documented, but I never got to see them due to personal reasons. And then more appeared, and I was clouded out for those. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, it's been very cloudy at the moment these nights. So this is the first time ever in years of observing this phenomena probably since about the year 2000, that I haven't seen an NLC display by the middle of June. <laughs> but, it's okay Rhea. But there might be clear spells tonight, and there will be at some stage of the next few weeks. So hopefully the Noctilus and Clouds have put on a good show. It's actually my favourite summertime, summertime phenomena. Uh, very strange actually at the minute, uh, if you read spaceweather.com, NLCs have kicked off very early because of uh, low temperatures in the mesosphere. Sorry, sufficient moisture in the mesosphere. There's abundance of moisture, so the NLCs have been appearing early. The only problem is they've been staying in the high altitudes 
and not really propagating down as close to the middle learning attitudes as usual because it's not cold enough here very strange they have the moisture but the temperatures aren't as cold further south so at the minute they're kind of restricted to the higher latitudes you can still see them from here but they'll be lower in the sky but really this time of year we should be getting prolific displays very complex very bright at this stage but i'm sure those will come in due course and the mesosphere probably will cool down uh, on the weeks ahead so uh, certainly can rule out some beautiful displays over the next month or so and i look forward to document documenting them photographing them and getting them time lapsed of course so just enjoying this day in Armagh, nice relaxing day. Uh, thanks again to John McConnell for directing me in the, to the correct location here to find Thomas's grave. And uh, okay, time to move on. We got a snack <laughs> and a drink, and we'll check out the observatory at Armagh. Okay, we're now at the grounds of Armagh Observatory. The planetarium is way down that direction. There's a primary school here making a lot of noise in the background, so excuse that. This is the grounds of the actual observatory. This is the professional area where all the astronomy, the real astronomy, is done. Um, as far as I know, this is you can walk around the grounds, but Inside the observatory is private, you only get a tour if you ask and get permission to go in. So, anyway, here's a, one of the domes here, and another here, and behind me is the observatory building itself, very old, beautiful building. But here's the weather station. famous one cup anemometer of course you can't see it in the wide angle here Thomas Romney Robinson invented lots of equipment here quite impressive yeah, it says here Met Office recognized as a long-term observing station by the World Meteorological Organization in June 2018 for more than 100 years of meteorological observations Brilliant. <laughs> Ria, come here. Quite sophisticated instruments actually in there. Come here. Ria sees our dogs. This here looks new. Last time I was here I didn't actually see this. Let's find out what it is. Maybe a solar observing telescope. We'll see. Nope, it doesn't say. It's Astro Park, the solar system. Here we go. Stay closer here. There's the grub telescope, don't know if you can see it, reflection in the window. Brass, huge <laughs> telescope with a lovely brass finder scope on it, guide scope. Beautiful telescope, you can't really see it unless you're in there. I was in here years ago with John McFarland doing a tour, it was really cool. You're not going to observe through the telescope, Ria, are you? You're going to observe through the telescope. Alright, do some astronomy. This is the actual observatory itself. Famous location. Up here we have a large version of the one cup anemometer. And there's also a meteor patrol camera station up here as well. It does a superb job, works all year round. They capture meteors, fireballs, and even sprites.
Actually, it is open. Planned. Open to 5 p.m. Just around the back of the observatory here. Lovely photographs up. And this one in particular, I'd love to get one of these printed large for the house and the office. That's uh, the Whirlpool Galaxy M51. I've actually was observing this before during the springtime from uh, big more stone circles, the 10 inch reflector. And although you don't see that through the telescope, it looks like a grey smudge of light. I could actually discern the spiral arms on some of the dust lanes and of course uh, the bridge of, of stars that connects the Whirlpool to the NGC galaxy beside it. So the two galaxies are connected with this bridge of star forming regions and gas and dust. Beautiful galaxy. And of course there's the Andromeda galaxy M31 with M110 below it and M32 beside it. These are all visible. This is actually visible in the naked eye over 2.3 million light years away so you can see that with the naked eye if you have a dark sky. Uh, easy object in binoculars and fantastic in a white, white field, rich field telescope. And this is the Crab Nebula M1. One of the more difficult and fainter of the uh, 110 Messier objects that Charles Messier documented. This is number one in the catalogue. Uh, very unusual object, probably the most unusual in the entire catalogue. That's actually the remnant of a supernova explosion that erupted. See if it says here. Yeah, the nebula is actually expanding at 1000 kilometers per second. It's also known as the Crab Nebula. And of course we have Mars, the Sun, which is now starting to waken up as we enter solar cycle 25. Uh, our neighbour, the moon, and of course, Earth. Really nice display, actually, I really love one of them posters. In fact, the next time it op opens up, I may actually go in and buy one of those large posters of the Whirlpool, because that is so cool. And I went back out here in the park. I must get back into the observatory someday, uh, get a tour again and meet some of the staff. Really nice people. So I'm back in the Astro Park. Where the domes, the telescopes are, and I'm going to head back now to the van. Rio's starting to get tired, so I might just check out Armagh Cathedral on the way out again because that's a really cool building inside of it. It's gorgeous, so I'll do that. So, thanks very much for watching, and catch you all again soon. Alan.